I'm Valerie. Welcome to the owner's class video for the Singer Confidence 7640 sewing machine. In this video, we're going to go over some great stuff like a tour of the machine, winding a bobbin, threading your needle, selecting a stitch, and a bunch of other great stuff. In your box, you're going to get your machine, and you'll also get an instruction manual full of all sorts of great information, so you'll want to keep this handy. You also get a quick start guide, which has some great pictures in it to get you started quickly. And you get a stitch chart, and this shows you all of the stitches that come in your machine. Let's take a look at the machine. When you take your machine out of the box, you'll notice that it was shipped with the quick start guide underneath the presser foot. So to get that out, I'm going to raise it using the presser foot lifter and take it out. Now we're ready to look at the rest of the machine. The first thing we're going to do is plug in our power cord to the side of the machine and then plug in the foot control and turn the machine on. And you'll know it's on when the light comes on. On the side of the machine, we also have a hand wheel with arrows printed on it to remind you to only turn the hand wheel towards you. On top, we have a bobbin winding stopper, a bobbin winding spindle, a spool pin where we'll put our thread, a handle to make our machine extra portable with a hole in the side, and that's where we're going to put our stitch chart holder. We also have a tension dial which allows us to fine tune the look of our stitches, a bobbin winding tension disc, a metal threading guide, another metal guide, and we have the take-up lever, and this is very important when we thread the machine, and we'll go over that later. On the front of the machine, under the LCD screen, we have function buttons and a mode button. We also have a speed control lever, a programmable needle up-down button, which allows me to choose if I want the needle to end in the up or down position when I stop sewing, a reverse button, that also doubles as a save feature when we program letter stitches. And this is a start-stop button, which allows us to sew on the machine without using the foot control. We have another metal guide for threading, the needle, the presser foot that comes on your machine, and here again we have our presser foot lifter, which allows us to lower and raise the presser foot, a built-in needle threader, a buttonhole lever, and we'll go over that more when we do a buttonhole. On the front, we have a bobbin already in the machine, and if we remove our accessory tray, we expose the free arm, which is great if you're sewing anything circular like pants, hems, or cuffs. And when we turn our accessory tray around, there's a door, and it's filled with accessories. Behind your free arm is the feed teeth lever, that if you move it over, it drops your feed teeth. And that's great for free motion sewing or sewing on a button. To raise them again for regular sewing, just move it back where it was and turn the hand wheel towards you one complete rotation. And that's it. Now let's look at all the presser feet that come with the machine. In addition to the all-purpose foot that already comes attached to your machine, you get all of these other presser feet. You get a zipper foot, which like its name is used for sewing zippers, but it can also be used for creating and sewing and piping. You also get a button sewing foot, which is transparent with the blue toes, and that's used for sewing on a button. You get a blind hem foot for making blind hems, and that's great for like pan hems. You get a buttonhole foot, which is for making buttonholes. A sew easy foot, which has a guide on the side, and it helps you more easily see your seam allowance, and it makes sewing seams so easy. You get a satin stitch foot, which is great for applique. A cording foot, that has three grooves in it that you can put cords in and sew a decorative stitch over them for embellishment. An open toe foot, which is transparent and has a wide opening so that you can easily see and attach trims. And lastly, you get an even feed walking foot. And that allows you to sew through layers that might shift while you're sewing. So it's great for quilting. Now I have one last thing I wanna show you before we thread our machine. Also with your machine, you get this great extension table. And to attach it, you just slide it over your free arm. And it's great when you're working with larger projects where you want a nice flat surface. And when you're done, just simply remove the extension table 
and put your accessory tray back on. Now let's wind a bobbin. Before we start winding our bobbin, we need to raise our presser foot lifter and move this little black button over to pop off our clear view cover and then we can retrieve our bobbin. This machine uses transparent class 15 bobbins. So if you ever want to go get more bobbins, make sure they are a class 15 transparent bobbin. Otherwise, it's not going to work in your machine very well. Go into your accessory tray and retrieve the spool cap. Put your spool of thread on the spool pin and top it off with a spool cap. On the top of the machine, we'll notice that there are some illustrations. I see some in gray and blue. And for bobbin winding, we're going to follow the blue illustrations. So number one is the metal guide. I'm gonna go through there. Then I'm going to come down. Then bring the thread over to the bobbin winding spindle and put the thread in the bobbin and out through the hole on the top. Hold the thread tail and place the bobbin onto the spindle. Make sure the bobbin's on all the way or the thread might start winding on the spindle itself and that's kind of a pain to get off. Move your bobbin winding spindle over to the right which engages bobbin winding mode. And you'll notice that on your LCD screen you'll see this little icon that looks like a bobbin. If your foot control is plugged in, you can step on the foot control or if it's not plugged in, press the start stop button. Once the thread tail is buried, clip it flush with the top of the bobbin and continue winding until either the bobbin is full or you're satisfied with how much thread is on it. Move the bobbin winding spindle back to the left and take off the bobbin. Trim the thread and now we're ready to put it in our machine. Before we put our bobbin into our machine, make sure the thread is coming off the bobbin in a counterclockwise motion. Or you could also say that it looks like a letter P. P for perfect sewing. Put your bobbin into the bobbin case and lightly put your finger on top of the bobbin. Bring the thread under this black piece and follow the arrow up, around, back down, and trim the thread. Now put the clear view cover back on. Now we're ready to thread the top of the machine. If you've just wound a bobbin, the top of your machine probably looks like this. For threading the upper thread, we are going to follow the gray diagrams. So our thread is already in guide number one, so I'm going to remove the thread from the bobbin winding tension disc. Then bring the thread to number two, so it's in between the two metal pieces. Bring it down number three, you turn it number four, up to number five, which is the take-up lever. Bring the thread from the right to the left, and make sure the thread goes into the eye of the take-up lever. Then bring the thread back down to number six, and put it behind the metal guide at number six. Then put the thread into the metal guide right above the needle, and you'll do that by sliding it from the right. Hold on to your thread, and push down on your built-in needle threader. Bring the thread into the hook, and wrap it around and place the thread into the metal prongs that are surrounding the needle. Hold onto the thread for some light tension and release your built-in needle threader. Oops, sometimes it doesn't happen on the first go. And there we are. Hold on to your loop, pull it through, and put the thread under the presser foot. Now we're ready to test our stitch. Now we're going to test sew to make sure our machine is threaded properly. When you turn on the machine, it's already selected for a straight stitch. So just put your fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot lifter, and I have the foot control plugged in, so I'm going to step on the foot control. Make sure the needle is in the highest position, which it stopped at because we have a programmable needle up. Raise the presser foot lifter, and trim the thread. It looks good on the front and the back. 
If your stitches look like this on the top and like this on the back, it usually means that your upper thread is not threaded properly. Rethread the machine and check your instruction manual for more information. Now we're ready to sew a seam. If we come over to our needle plate, we'll see a bunch of lines and measurements that say 3 8 5 8 and 7 8 5 8 is a very common seam allowance on many projects, so I'm going to line up my fabric with the 5 8 line and lower the presser foot. I'm going to sew forward a few stitches and then press the reverse button. Now I'm going to continue sewing down my seam. Notice I don't push or pull the fabric, I am just guiding it along the guideline. When we reach the end of our fabric, press and hold the reverse button, lift the presser foot lever, and trim the thread. And here we have our seam. I did the reverse sewing at the beginning and end to keep it from unraveling later. Now let's take a look at our Sew Easy foot. Now I want to make a seam using our Sew Easy foot. This foot has a guide on the side that we can move to set our seam allowance. And the third red mark over is for 5 eighths, so that's where I'm going to set it. To change our presser foot, there is a little lever that sticks out behind it. Push it, and the foot pops off. Place the Sew Easy foot underneath and lower the presser foot lifter so that it catches the foot and you'll hear it click into place. Raise the foot and place the thread underneath. Take your fabric and line it up with the guide. Lower your presser foot and begin sewing. Sew a few stitches and press and hold the reverse button and then let go to keep sewing forward. When you reach the end of your fabric, press and hold the reverse button again, then let go. Lift the presser foot lifter and trim the thread. The Sew Easy Foot made it super easy to see the seam line. Now let's see how to select some of your other stitches. Now I want to try out some of the other stitches on my machine. We have a handy dandy stitch card that came with the machine to show me all of the stitches. On the front I have modes 1 and 2 which are all continuous stitches and on the back mode 3 which are programmable stitches. I want to stitch out mode 1 so I'm going to put on my stitch card holder onto the card. and place it into the hole that's on my handle. Now I can see all of my stitches without having to hold the card. Go to your screen where we see 01, and I want to do stitch number 51 in mode one. The screen shows the icon for mode one, so I'm going to go up so that my screen displays 51. On my screen, we also see a presser foot icon with the letter T. And that's the all-purpose foot, which is already on the machine. So let's stitch this out. Now I'm going to put my fabric under the presser foot and lower it and begin sewing. reach the end of your fabric, lift off of the presser foot with your presser foot lifter and trim the threads. And we have this great looking stitch. Now I want to customize the look of my stitch, so I'm going to come back to my function buttons and I have this on my screen that looks like a zigzag with the number 5.0. So I'm going to make that wider, so I'm going to bring that all the way up to seven, which is its maximum stitch width. Put it back under the presser foot, and let's sew this out. Stop 
stop sewing, raise the presser foot and trim the threads. And here we can see that the stitch looks much wider. Now I want to make it look more narrow, so I'm going to come back to the stitch width selector and I'm going to bring it down. You can see it flash and hear it beep when it's back at the default. Now I'm going to keep going. All the way down to 2.5. Let's give this a try. Stop sewing, raise the presser foot and trim the threads. And there we see the original stitch, but much more narrow. Now let's play around with stitch length. So I'm going to bring the width back to default, which I will see when it flashes and hear it beep. And I'm going to come over to the stitch length button and I'm going to increase it up to three. And I'm gonna sew it out. Stop sewing, raise the presser foot and trim the threads. And there's what that little starburst stitch looks like when it's elongated. Now I'm going to make it a lot shorter. So I'm going to come back to the stitch length button and I'm going to press the minus button until it's all the way down at number one. And let's try this one out. Stop sewing, raise the presser foot, and trim the threads. And here we have the stitch where we made it very short. Isn't it really cool how we took this one stitch and really changed up the look just by playing with stitch length and width? Now let's play around with a stitch on mode 2. Now I want to select a stitch from mode 2 on my machine. So I'm going to go to the icon that looks like mode 2 and press my mode button so the icon matches. And I want to do stitch 18 that kind of looks like this squiggly satin stitch. So I'm going to go up one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And because this is an electronic machine, everything is set up for me. But I do see that there's this presser foot icon that has the letter A next to it. And the A foot is my satin stitch foot. So I went into my accessory tray and got the satin stitch foot, and I'm just going to change the presser foot. Place the thread under the presser foot. And now I'm ready to put my fabric under, lower the presser foot, and start sewing. Stop sewing, raise the presser foot, and trim the threads. And check out how great this stitch looks. Just like in mode one, if you want to customize the look of your stitch, you can play around with your stitch length and stitch width buttons. Now I want to stitch out a sequence from mode three. I've already turned my card to the other side so I can see all of the letters on mode three. And I'm going to stitch out the word singer because that is already in your instruction manual so you can follow along. I'm going to press my mode button so that I see A, B, C. So Singer begins with the letter S. So on my card, S is the number 19. So I'm going to select 19. And then I'm going to come over here where on the panel I see A, B, C and press the plus. Now we'll see 01, 01. That means stitch number one of one stitch in the sequence. So now that S is added, I'm going to do the letter I, which is 09, add, N is number 14, 
add. G is number seven. E is number five. And R is number 18. So I have six letters in my sequence. Before I start sewing, I need to come over to my reverse button that has the little floppy disk icon and press this button. Now the machine has saved my sequence so we can start sewing. I'm going to take my fabric and actually really quickly, I'm going to look back at the screen and I see that it has the presser foot icon with letter A and I already have that attached from when I was doing a satin stitch for mode two. So we can leave that foot on. Put the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot and start sewing. When you've reached the end of the sequence, the machine will stop, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. And here's what's stitched out. And after I trim all these little tails, we will get this. Now let's work on making a buttonhole. Now I want to make a buttonhole and the buttonholes are in mode one. As you can see on your stitch card, there are eight different buttonholes that you can stitch out. We have keyhole buttonholes, bar tack buttonholes, and even some stretch stitch buttonholes. I wanna sew the regular bar tack buttonhole number 26. On my LCD screen, I see that my presser foot needs to be D, which is the buttonhole foot. And I need to bring down the buttonhole lever. And I'll do that whenever I put my foot on the machine. Before I place my button in the buttonhole foot, I'm going to mark where I want the buttonhole on my project. So I'm going to place the button down on my fabric and mark a line on the bottom of the buttonhole. And then I'm going to use a ruler and just draw a straight line to help guide me. Take your buttonhole foot and open up this top part where you see a little button icon. Place the button inside and push on the top so that it's snug. Now I'm ready to put the buttonhole foot on my machine. So I'm going to remove whatever foot's already attached and put this one on. Then bring down your buttonhole lever. Take your fabric and line up this mark so that you can see it in this opening. Lower the presser foot lifter and start sewing. When the machine is done with the buttonhole, it will stop on its own, raise the presser foot, and remove the fabric. And since the machine already tied off the stitch for you, you can just go ahead and trim the threads. Now I want to open up my buttonhole so we can put our button through it. I'm going to take a pin and put it through the top of my buttonhole so that we don't cut through the bar tack. Take the seam ripper that came in the accessory tray and we can use it for opening up buttonholes too. I'm going to insert it in the bottom and let her rip. Remove the pin and now we have a buttonhole perfectly sized for our button. Now let's look at how to change a needle.
To change a needle on my machine, I need to get out the L-shaped screwdriver from my accessory tray. To make it a little easier, I'm going to remove the presser foot. And as an added tip, I'm going to put a little piece of paper over the opening in my needle plate just so I don't accidentally drop the needle into my machine. I'm going to grab the needle and use the screwdriver and turn the screw towards me to loosen it. And remove the needle. Take a brand new needle with the flat side towards the back and insert it as high as it will go and tighten the screw by turning it away from you. Now you've successfully changed a needle. That's our video and thanks for watching. For more information, check out the Singer website and happy sewing!